every minute and every hour is test time. They've just wrapped up the AFFF fire suppression testing here in Hangar Bay. You're going to learn a lot more about that test and about all the tests as Aaron Pritchett with our communications division takes us on a step-by-step, day-by-day journey of the events better known as sea trials. It's been more than a decade from initial concept to now. And Gerald R. Ford is finally cutting through the open waters of the Atlantic Ocean for the very first time. A truly remarkable and historical moment. But don't be deceived, this is definitely not a pleasure cruise. Because over the last several days, 3,000 people consisting of the Navy, vendors, and our very own Newport News shipbuilders have been working nonstop around the clock, putting the most powerful ship in the world to the ultimate test. And we've been along for the ride to help document and give you a day-by-day -day account of everything that's been involved in the intense builder sea trials aboard CVN 78. Sea trials are important for us since I've been on the boat since 2009 to see every little piece that we installed then lead up to what their final mission is. Since we can't just hand them keys with a done carrier, we have to do this in increments and steps. So to tie it all together, to put it out here and make it all work together has its challenges and that's why we're here and we'll uh, go again for acceptance trials. But to get through builders trials and be able to say we've done everything this ship should see in the next 50 years and kind of pack that into five days. It's exciting, uh, it's challenging, but uh, we're gonna get through it. It's building an entire, almost a city, and then making that city move. There's a lot of moving parts to this trial, especially with everything kind of coming together at once. So the, the real hub you know, this center is really the platform hull mechanical electrical center where we coordinate all the tests and demonstrations for that area. And when you really look at it, uh, to think about what you're doing and, and seeing this 100,000 ton uh, piece of metal moving through the water now and trying to make sure that all the systems work and work like they're supposed to, uh, it's, it's, it's very challenging and uh, to be quite honest, very tiring at times. We were testing the uh, emergency steering for CVN 78. What will happen is if at sea we lose main steering, two sailors will take control, one on starboard, one on port, and they'll uh, control the ship via the trick wheel. And so this is a backup to that if for some reason the rudders can't respond to anything else. From the moment we get on, we know we have a set window to get all of our testing done. PAL stands for Precision Aircraft Landing. PAL test, uh, it's one of those systems where you have to be at sea because you need the flights coming in. Um, PALs is, are used to land the aircraft, and that's basically what you want, making sure that the two different systems are tracking the planes and able to uh, do what they're designed to do. PALs is just a portion of all the testing that we had to get done and anything goes wrong, we have to fix it on the spot and then do a retest of, of those systems uh, to ensure that, that they are tested and certified. Aqueous film forming foam. Basically all it does is uh, it creates a layer of uh, bubbles that prevents oxygen from getting to the fire and it's also a surfactant which helps break the water tension of the liquid. It saves people, it saves equipment, it saves the ship, prevents further damage. I mean, you want to keep this thing floating when you're at sea. The flight deck, they do the same thing as a, uh, the hangar bay, but it's up on the flight deck. It sprays up, creates a layer of foam, and uh, covers the fuel. Well, I mean, this is what we live for. I mean, this is like seeing the system in operation. I mean, this is like the end result. And make sure that it works correctly before we turn it over to the Navy. You see people do things every day, uh, putting their pride into the work and then presenting it to the customer. They see it, the customer sees it, they like, you know, getting a ship that people really put their pride into. And, uh, and, and it's reflective of everything when you look at the, you know, each part of the ship. Uh, what we've done lately here is, is test it and, and really exercise every aspect of it. And that's what, that's what you know, part of our job, but also part of what we want to do to make sure the customer gets the ship they need. So during the high speed turns, we, we went up to max speed that the propulsion plant could take you to. 
and did full swings of the rudder, all the way to its maximum limit to the port side, then all the way to the maximum limit to the port so starboard side. And the ship starts to turn, so it turns the rudder. And we saw down there the, the rudder, the ram room, the rams push the rudder over, and then it takes just a little while, and then the ship starts to turn. And all the weight of that water and the ship pushing against that rudder is all being tested here at sea and gets that ship in that high speed turn that really lays us over. And it's, it's, it's neat to stand on hangar bay leaned over that far. Important to have that emergency backup to be able to anchor somewhere so that you're not going to drift into something and run aground. The new anchor system has electronic capabilities, new design, it has a new, new braking system. So that system was fully tested, and we're confident that you could do a slow release of the anchor, or if you had to do it in an emergency, a faster release. We, we tested the fast release and catch capabilities of the anchor. So that was, that was a uh, very successful test. A first ship of a class is always going to be challenging, uh, you know, uh, and the more sophisticated, more high, the higher tech technologies of have proven to be hard. We've uh, certainly shown we're up to the challenge uh, and we're fighting our way through it. Uh, gonna cause us to stay out to sea a couple more days, but uh, you know, I started on this project in 99, so uh, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have missed it for the world. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's something to see. It have gone from, you know, the early days of concept and planning and 3D product model and first cuts of steel and keel laying events to, you know, today you see what it looks like. And, you know, it's pretty amazing, it really is. Although sea trials has been intense, exhausting, and quite challenging, the greatest reward has been seeing our shipbuilders rise to the occasion to help meet the demands of getting this ship out into open waters and have her perform like she was built and intended to do for the five men and women that serve aboard her. For Focus NNS, I'm Aaron Pritchett. Back to you, Brian. All right, thanks a lot, Aaron. Great job. We will, of course, continue to follow the Ford right on through to commissioning, which is scheduled for later this summer. Well, that's going to do it for this very special edition of Focus NNS here aboard the Ford. Make sure you check out all the latest news from Newport News Shipbuilding and our weekly publication, Currents, and by downloading our app, nns to go Plus, check out all the latest news on our social media pages and on Cox Cable Channel 1886. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Brian Moore.